What's up my crew members? My name is Andrew from the Superhero Crew. Welcome to episode 10 of Comic Talk. This is the show where I talk about the comics that I decided to get this week and today. We're talking about Spider-Gwen number 28, Batman number 40, and the JLA Doom Patrol special number 1. So let's talk. Yeah, I know, guys. There wasn't a comic talk last week. I got the flu last week, and it was pretty bad, and I didn't want to go and get comic books and get people sick, and I didn't really feel like going out anyway. But I did pick up, I was able to pick up Spider-Gwen, which came out last week, and same thing with the JLA Doom Patrol special. was able to get that, le uh, that this week, which came out the last week of January. So, let's look about Spider-Gwen number 28 first. So, uh, the Gwenum arc seems to be going a little, uh, it, it seems like it's it, it's dragging on a lot, I guess, um, but now we actually get to see not a whole lot of Spider-Gwen in this issue, and I kind of like how we're building a universe here and, like, we're not focusing on Spider-Gwen and her problem for 12 issues. We're actually focusing on other characters. We actually learn Matt Murdock's uh, origin in this universe, that his mom and him, him and his mom got chemicals uh, all over them, and, like, his mom rubbed them in, in, in his eyes, and I guess that's how he got, blind, uh, got blinded. And, obviously, you know, his... Dad uh, got shot because he didn't win the or he didn't lose the boxing match, and you know his his uh, dad got shot, and then Dar Matt Murdock actually beat up the gangsters because they were supposed to kill Matt Murdock, which is which is pretty interesting. Then he started roaming around by himself. Then Stick shows up and actually gets killed by the hand, you know. But before that, he trains Matt Murdock, and then Matt Murdock gets all mad, but then he joins the hand, and they got too scared of him, so then they kick him out of the hand. Then, Matt Murdock became the kingpin of crime, and he's about to commit seppuku, but then he sees Spider-Gwen, he's like, ooh, I could, I could do something crazy about this girl. And Aunt May and Uncle Ben, because Uncle Ben's actually alive in this universe, because remember, Peter died instead of Gwen. Uh, Gwen shows you know, uh, the Mary Janes and Uncle Ben and Aunt May that she is Spider-Woman. Then Uncle Ben kind of does the classic line where he says, you be given this power for a reason, Gwen. You, no one else. This is your responsibility. Then we see Frank Castle, the Punisher, with his Iron Man uh, arm that he has, and it looks honestly like Hellboy's arm, to be honest. It's like really big and weird looking and he's going up to basically try and kill Matt Murdock, and then the issue ends. So this whole Gwenum arc seems to be dragging out a lot. It, it, I feel like this arc has been going on forever, but we're building uni a universe. We brought in Wolverine and Shadowcat, and we brought in uh, Elsa Brock, who is the Eddie Brock of the, this universe, and we're also showing now the origin of Matt Murdock. And we're also seeing what Frank Castle's doing. A one-man war on the Kingpin. That's what Frank Castle's doing. And a lot of the issue, we didn't even see Spider-Gwen that much. Which is surprising to me because the book is called Spider-Gwen. But like I said, we're building a universe. And that's what I like about it. So for Spider-Gwen number 28, I really like this issue. I'm going to have to give it an 8.5 out of 10. So, I got a funny story for JLA and the Doom Patrol special uh, number one, which is Milk Wars Part 1. I got a funny story for you guys. I had no idea this event was happening. I read, me and my dad read Doom Patrol Volume 1, brick by brick. We bought the trade. Weird, but it was good. I liked it. Uh, it was weird, but, and very psychedelic, but it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. And I'm reading JLA, the current JLA series that's going on now. And I was reading JLA, and I saw an ad for this, and I was like, Milk Wars? What is going on? So I picked this up, and I read a, a little bit of it. 
I, I don't I don't know how far I got into it. Maybe ten pages, maybe, and I stopped reading it because I was for whatever reason just couldn't get into it, and I was like, I wasted five dollars on this. You got to be kidding me! But then I said, you know what? Let me go back to it. Let me just go back to it and see what it's really all about. And, well, we're going to get into it. So there's this green guy with this purple cape called Lord Manga Khan, who's talking to this, I think, I believe he's the CEO of this, uh, of this company called Retcon. And by the way, before I continue, I like how it's called Retcon because they're kind of retconning, I guess, the young animal characters into the DC universe because young animal was I kind of reminded me of vertigo reminded me of vertigo because they were cursing they were doing all these crazy things in there that you wouldn't normally find in a DC book and that's why it was young animals more for adult readers and stuff like that which I liked and now they're bringing them into the DC universe which is pretty cool so I like how the company's called retcon with two ends because they're retconning these characters into the DC Universe. So while I try to explain this story to you, there will be spoilers, so if you don't want to learn anything about uh, the Milk Wars event, then just skip the video, the rest of the video, because, um, well, it's pretty weird. But, and if I seem all over the place while I'm telling you what happened in it, it's because it's all over the place. So we see Milkman Man, uh, delivering milk to this house, and basically he's the milkman man, and he's delivering milk like a milkman would, and we see Danny the Ambulance from Doom Patrol, he just comes out of nowhere out of this portal, and we see uh, Casey Flex Mantelo, uh, the Negative Man and Robot Man, and, and Crazy Jean, I believe that's her name, trying to figure out what's going on because there's something going on with milk, and then we see Lobo, who is a part of uh, this group, and then we see Lobo, and he looks all, like, weird, and, like, he's from the 50s, and he's a part of the Community League of Rhode Island, so basically, the milk is making everybody who drinks it into, like, 50s, like, characters. It's so weird, and they basically just fight the Doom Patrol. So the JLA is, like, 50s characters versus... Uh, or go up against the Doom Patrol, and it's a pretty sweet fight, and Milkman Man is supposed to be Superman, which I don't know why I didn't pick that up until, like, they kind of outright said it almost. And then there's these two awesome double-page splashes. Here's the first one, and then the second one of just the Doom Patrol and the JLA fighting, and it looks... Pretty awesome. Then we see the CEO of Retcon talking to that weird green guy cape, Lord Lord Manga Khan. And uh, he's basically like, there's the god of superheroes. It's like a family tree. There's the god of superheroes. And then you have Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. And they all go down and people influence each other. But Superman is just one straight line fr directly from the god of superheroes. So their branded Superman is Milk Man Man. Then we cut back to Crazy Jane, who is on like a subway terminal. And this woman gets out of the subway and they start talking. But then there's a double page splash of the first appearances of, of the characters of the JLA. So you got like the first appearance of, you know, Superman with Action Comics number one, or the first appearance of Lobo the, from the Omega Man number three, and all the, all the first appearances. And it's weird because it's like, they're, they're breaking the fourth wall here and saying like, the, this, the, these people are art. That's what they are. And they kind of broke the fourth wall with Doom Patrol, but in a clever way, where Casey is a comic book character. But then, Apparently, Milkman Man is the son of Casey, of Casey Brink. What? Like it's it, it's just it kind of and then and then and then Milkman Man just leaves. We don't really find out anything else about about that. But because they went into this psychedelic thing, seeing their first appearances, they all go back to normal and they have like this this two page. 
uh, conversation about just random stuff and like where like Flex Mentalo's like, hey, uh, you know, Ray, you're pretty cool. Your jacket's pretty cool. Jesus. Uh, uh, your jacket's pretty cool. Maybe you should come to Danny Land with us one day. And Ray's like, oh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. But then we see Cave Carson as a hologram with from his cybernetic eye. I don't, I'm not reading that, so I have no idea what's going on in that. I don't know if that has anything to do with that series. But he's like, he's like, me and my buddy Swamp Thing, ooh, me, he goes, me and my buddy Swamp Thing are, found out that Retcon, the company Retcon, is making people drink milk, and also, by the way, forgot to mention that, uh, uh, Milkman Man forced milk down the JLA's throats so that they could turn into these 50s character thingy people. So then they're like, alright, well, you know what, let's use this eye and let's go and teleport wherever and figure out what's going on. So the eye teleports them somewhere and then the issue ends. So what they're doing is it's going to be weekly. Uh, the second one came out this week. But I didn't get it because I wasn't too sure if I would like this one. And I, I, I surprisingly do. I started reading it, it was, got so bored, and I was like, oh my god, this is really boring. And, but then I kept reading it, I was like, huh, I see what you did there. And it's pretty interesting what they're doing. I don't like when comics break the fourth wall. But they're doing it pretty interesting. So, this was weird, and I recommend you pick it up. And if you like it, then pick up the other issues. If you don't, obviously don't. But I'd recommend you definitely pick up this first issue, even though it was very weird. Uh, $4.99, because I, I thought to myself, wow, I spent $5 and this is terrible. But it's actually not bad. So, for the JLA Doom Patrol special, I think I would have to give it... Mm, an 8 out of 10, because the art was pretty good, too. All right, so now we're going to talk about Batman 40. Um, what happened was in the last issue, Wonder Woman and Batman decide to make a promise to the gentleman who's in some kind of alternate universe, and all he does is fight demon hordes constantly. They just, the horde is never ending, they keep coming. And then the new issue, they're still there, and the gentleman wants to go see his his uh, wife, and Catwoman is kind of helping him out. We find out in this issue that the longer, for every second, that they stay in the, in the uh, regular universe, Batman and Wonder Woman are in there for like uh, a day per, per second. So they're there for like 30 years from the time he's here. So they go see him, she's like, come on, come on, come on. Finally she convinces him, and the gentleman goes back. And Wonder Woman and Batman come back, and uh, Catwoman is basically the hero of this, brings them back, and that's it. So, what do you think? I th see. I think um, this issue was good. Uh, I'm liking these two issue arcs that they're doing with that Tom King's doing, where he's got like a two issue arc, then a one shot. Then another two issue arc. I don't know how what's the next arc, what's gonna happen next, but I'm kinda liking that. This was th this arc was a little eh, even though there was more action in it. I do like the uh, the last two issue arc with Superman, the double date, mm -hmm. the whole, that whole thing. That was a lot better than this one, because it was weird and kinda cool to see Batman and Superman actually hang out and go on a date. This was just, even though there was some awesome action in it and the art is pretty good, this was a weird arc and like, you know, Wonder Woman and Batman were going to kiss, but then Batman's like, no, I can't, I miss Catwoman. So, I don't know. That's, that's, what, I, I, that's what I think. I think this is like, this was eh, this was eh, wasn't as good as like the double date, but I hope that it gets better in the next arc or one shot that Tom King has to show us. So what what did you think? Yeah. This this issue could have been finished in the other issue. I agree. It was basically it was it was, it was nothing going on. They it could they just, could have done They like, could have done it in one issue. Yeah, they could have done it like a one shot, but And the thing that stinks is there's like six pages or eight pages of um the The Immortal The Immortal Men. So the whole end of the book is like six or seven pages, 
is all an advertiser for the immortal men. So you get stuck. Basically, this is the way to get three bucks out of us. All right. They, um, you know, it was a one issue thing that could have been one issue, and then they hit you with the immortal men. I don't know. I I'm, I wasn't too crazy about this one. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was bad at all. I thought it was the writing was fine. I just think that that Tom King's could have been. It could have been one issue. Yeah, I I, this could have been just a single issue, like they did with that. Uh, the origin of Bruce Wayne one shot, which yeah. I thought was really good. Yeah, that was good. That was this, that was good. This one they stretched out. They yeah, got, they got an extra three bucks out of this. Yeah, but you know maybe Tom King has something planned for no, I think I the next see. arc. I don't know. All right, so what would you give Batman number forty? Six. Six out of ten. Six out of ten. I think really. Like I said, old, I I said it before. I don't have to repeat it. Could have been done in one issue. Yeah, I I uh, I would I would give it less. But the writing and the artwork was good. The story was actually good. But like I said, it could have been the other one. And then I'm going to take off an extra point because of the freaking Immortal Man. Yeah. So 6 out of 10 for six you. Out of 10. I'd give it a 7 just because I think the art was pretty, pretty solid in this issue. All right, guys. So if you like the video, please like. Got any questions, comment down below. And subscribe for more comic-based videos. And I'll see you in the next one.